Okay, we're now going to uh, play around with this online calculator uh, you, that uses the Kaya identity to project future CO2 emissions. And uh, this identity, uh, as we uh, now know, um, uses the fact that uh, CO2 emissions are going to uh, be a project, a product of various uh, terms uh, that contribute to uh, emissions growth, um, population, uh, GDP per person relative economic growth, uh, energy intensity, uh, the uh, amount of uh, energy we can get uh, for uh, a dollar, uh, a given amount of money, and carbon efficiency, um, how uh, efficient we are at producing energy in a non-carbon intensive manner. So the idea is that uh, population, we can use demographic projections that, for example, have uh, global population leveling out uh, somewhere around 11 billion uh, later this century. Um, uh, projections of uh, relative, uh, that is per capita economic growth that um, as uh, the world becomes more industrialized, as developing nations uh, develop more uh, industrial economies, uh, that uh, we're likely to see an increase in relative uh, eco economic expansion uh, per person. Um, energy intensity, in principle, should uh, decrease over time as we develop more, uh, more um, efficient uh, means of uh, obtaining uh, energy. Uh, we will uh, decrease uh, the cost in dollars for a given watt of uh, power. And uh, finally, carbon efficiency. Um, as we uh, switch over uh, to uh, less carbon intensive uh, sources of energy, um, we will decrease over time the amount of carbon that we emit uh, for each uh, uh, unit of power, uh, say a terawatt of power. So we can calculate CO2 emissions trajectories as a product of these various terms. Now uh, let's um, use the default values um, that uh, are set in the calculator and uh, do the calculation. And uh, here we go. Uh, this um, a red curve is the projected uh, future uh, carbon emissions uh, given uh, the uh, values that we've chosen for the various terms. And the blue pluses here show historical values of uh, carbon emissions. And so we can sort of see how our projection ties into uh, the uh, past historical trends. Um, we can use a, a, a carbon cycle model that involves some assumptions about uh, both the oceans and the terrestrial biosphere that calculates uh, the changes in CO2 concentrations over time given this carbon emission scenario. And uh, the red curve is what we're projecting uh, for uh, future CO2. By 2100, we reach about 700 parts per million. And uh, you can uh, compare that trajectory to various uh, stabilization scenarios. The green curve shows what the CO2 concentrations would be if we were to stabilize CO2 concentrations at 350 parts per million. The blue is 450 parts per million, um, and uh, so on. The yellow is uh, 750 parts per million. Eventually, CO2 concentration stabilizes at uh, 750 parts per million in that stabilization scenario. So we can see how our projected emissions are comparing with various stabilization scenarios. And if we take this as sort of business as usual, um, these various assumptions about population, GDP, energy intensity and carbon efficiency, um, then uh, we see that, in fact, will be uh, well over um, the uh, 750 stabilization scenario. We'll already be at 700 parts per million at 2100 with CO2 continuing to rise. Um, we can calculate accordingly uh, the amount of carbon-free energy we would need uh, given the assumptions of population, energy intensity, um, uh, we can calculate how much carbon-free energy we would need to produce to meet our energy demands if we are uh, to keep CO2 uh, to the specified level. And so we see the amount of carbon-free energy that would be required in the various CO2 stabilization scenarios. In the red curve is the amount of carbon-free energy that we would uh, need to produce.